This is Neil Pittori. In this segment, I'm going to talk about OFDM, in particular, the subcarriers, the frequency shift, and the pulse shape. An OFDM, that is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, is a version of multi-carrier modulation. In FSK, we use a single basis function at each of many frequencies. And in QAM, we use two basis functions, that is a sine and a cosine, at the same frequency. Multi-carrier modulation is the combination of the two. That is, we have a cosine and a sine at each of capital B different frequencies. We have the first set of basis functions. The first two are a square root of 2 P of T cosine of omega naught T and a minus square root of 2 P of T at sine omega naught T. Then the next pair of basis functions are the same except they're at a frequency omega naught plus 2 pi delta F. And we're going to keep doing this up to capital B. The last frequency will be omega naught plus 2 pi times B minus 1 times delta F and again the minus 2 p of t sine at the same frequency. And b we're going to call the number of subcarriers. Each subcarrier is going to be like a QAM system, so we might modulate each pair with some particular QAM. So because each pair gets modulated by a list of possible symbols along those two axes, I can draw then all capital K axes as a grid. Here's an example of what I can draw, even though I can't draw many dimensions. I'm going to draw a grid of three different basis functions and what that grid might look like. Here this would be if 4 pan is used on each of three different basis functions. And in general, we're not going to plot the constellation diagram for all k dimensions at the same time, but you can see that it's going to be multiplicative, that we're going to get lots and lots of different possible symbols. We're going to be able to send lots of bits during every symbol. So let's talk specifically about OFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, which is a subset of multi-carrier modulation. And in particular, OFDM is going to use the pulse shape that is the rect function. 1 over square root of t sub s between 0 and t sub s. So what's going to happen is that my basis functions now become as follows. All of these basis functions are the same except that now we're just multiplying a constant 1 over square root of t sub s by the, uh, the square root of 2 and the cosine or the square root of minus square root of 2 and the sine. I'm going to skip the function index 1 here and just go from 0 all the way to b minus 1 for each of the capital B different subcarriers. Now I talked about, when we talked about the rect function, I talked about how it has high side lobes in the frequency domain and how that was going to be not good for a digital communication system that is band limited. So first let's look at this OFDM signal in the frequency domain. So I'm borrowing a picture here from Keysight's website of OFDM, and it shows that each subcarrier, for example, this red subcarrier, has a, a rect function in the time domain, which ends up having these um, side lobes in the frequency domain that um, overlap with other subcarriers in the frequency domain. You can see that overlap in this picture here. The problem there being that this part over here, outside of our main signal bandwidth, is extra. We have to include extra bandwidth at the beginning and at the end to account for this signal that is uh, kind of spread out over a different band. However, because this signal is so packed in here into the space in between, we actually have a pretty efficient use of our spectrum here, even with this extra spectrum being included on the end. So it ends up being worth it to add an extra window of spectrum at the end of our signal in order to get away with being able to overlap these subcarriers in the frequency domain and still have them orthogonal. And to get that orthogonality, we need to use delta F equal to 1 over T sub S. That is, our symbol frequency is going to be the same as our delta F here. So our frequency spacing here 
is that 1 over t sub s. It's not 1 over 2 t sub s. We've talked about why that is in the case of non-coherent FSK, and you'll do some more with that on your homework 4. Nevertheless, this is a very spectrally efficient signal because we're able to put these signals right next to each other in the frequency domain and send them at the same time and still be able to separate them at the receiver.